some that are uh, kind of lightweight that I don't feel like are on, you know, that I'm not feeling the weight of the glasses the entire time. And these are doing pretty well. Surge you. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm looking at this, trying to evaluate it, and it's been a while since I've drawn on it, and I just thought I would do it live and talk through the process of how I think about it as I'm getting back into uh, drawing on a portrait after you've come back from a, a little break on it. And I kind of just go back through it and sort of reevaluate everything. And as I'm looking at it, one of the best things for me to do is go back up to the top, sort of top left, and then process through going down. And I'm looking at it now, and I think what I'll do is I'll start on the hair over here. Hey, Kathleen. So to answer your question about using Powder Blender, and that's a good question, what, what is the benefit of using Powder Blender over OMS? So I wouldn't say that... Sharpening this pencil, hold on. I wouldn't say that, that's a, uh, that there's necessarily a, uh, a benefit. It's, it's different. Both of those types of... Um, add-ins, if you will, those other things that we use um, with colored pencil, they, they work differently. And you can use OMS and Powder Blender in the same project. So the way I think about it when I'm, when I'm thinking about using Powder Blender is I'm going to be using something that will allow me to create multiple transparent layers. When I'm using OMS, most of the time what I'm doing is I'm flattening out everything. I'm taking uh, some of the layers that I built up and then I am uh, just removing a lot of that uh, the, um, uh, the transparency in there. And I, I'm creating something kind of flat and then I can go on top of that and add more layers, more OMS if I want to on top of that. But with Powder Blender, I can create something that has a real smooth appearance. With OMS, it's more difficult uh, to do that. I think the real benefit, uh, as, I th as I think through this, is probably with doing portraits or something that you want to build up a whole bunch of transparent layers to get a smooth look and a smooth transition from a dark value to a light value. Um, I hope that helps a little bit. But like I said, you can use both OMS and Powder Blender in the same project. You don't use them at the same time, but you can build up uh, some layers. You can spray something that's underneath, and then you can use uh, one or the other on top. So just keep that in mind. I've done that before with a portrait, uh, one of my commission portraits, and I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm looking at some of these issues with the eyes that I need to correct. Uh, let's see here. And using Powder Blender, it does allow you to correct a lot of things. Kim on Facebook is asking what OMS stands for. That stands for Odorless Mineral Spirits, and so Gamsol uh, by Gamblin is one of the OMS solvents that I like to use. A lot of people just refer to it as solvent. I'll tell you that um, if I'm using Powder Blender, I'm not having to worry about, um, you know, these fumes that I'm not thinking about um, breathing in, that I'm inhaling all of that. I'm not worrying about that whenever I'm using Powder Blender. So that's a good thing. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, I'm going to look for some colors for this hair. And that's the other thing with powder blender. I'm not worrying about, um, now I did spray this recently, so just so you know. With powder blender, with powder blender, I'm not worrying about any of the, um, um, effects of having it you know, open, having that open um, like I am with, with Gamsel, and I'm not thinking about it. I remember one time I left some OMS um, open like all night, and I, I forgot about it, um, which isn't good. You want to use it, and then you want to put a lid back on it. You don't want to just leave it out. Um, so... Marlene is asking if Gamsol is preferable to Mona Lisa OMS. Uh, if you're asking my opinion, my opinion is I like Gamsol better. Um, Cassandra, you're asking, can anyone see this? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, are you not able to see the live stream, the project? little bit of this this gray in here this is called granite there we go now I want I want there to be this uh, sort of lost and found line in some of these areas and it, it makes it a little more dramatic when you're able to do that. Oh, yeah, no problem, Cassandra. Or Cassandra. I'm not sure how you pronounce yours, but... Um, yeah, we can see your messages. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what I want to do for this background also. But one of the nice... What I was going to say a while ago, though... Uh, with regard to Powder Blender is the other nice thing about it. As I'm building up layers, I don't have to worry about what the exact color is that I'm putting down. Um, with OMS, not so much. I have to kind of figure that out a little bit. So, a little more volume right up here. And then this thing comes down. I think it comes down right here a little bit more. So this comes up. There we go. And I don't want to lose this little bit of edge over here. And that edge there. And I'm just building that edge up for me. I'll fill that in later. And let's see. I need this needs built up just a little bit more right there and then I'll fill that in a little bit more later on but this comes down I think if I look at this correctly sort of right there by the ridge of of where the side plane of the nose is so I want to build that up a little bit right in there. There we go. And now, since I used blue in the background on the hair, um, I've got the darkest recesses 
taken care of then for me. And I want to look at this. If you if you notice this distance here between the eye and the eyebrow, it's a little bit more distance than in this interval up here to the hairline, but not not as much as we might think. So I think it comes down a little bit more right in here is what it looks like to me. I'm always a little more conservative whenever I'm um, laying in some of the first areas and I'm blocking in areas and I'm putting um, the hairline up here because I know I can always go back in the direction of the forehead. No, that's not changed. Uh, Serge is asking how much my opinion has changed of the Derwent Lightfast. No, they're very similar to the Derwent drawing pencils. Yeah, I do like them. Um, I, I'm just a little disappointed in some of the color selections that they didn't do anything dramatically different from the Derwent drawing um, color choices. And some of them behave just nearly identical. Um, I do like them a lot, though. And I did give them a second look. And um, I was just a little... Uh, I'll tell you this much. <laughs> I, was, I was a little salty and a little upset at the beginning whenever I did that first podcast about Derwent Drawing because they didn't... They just hyped it up so much. And they acted like that these were just going to be you know, just so great, and and then we got only 36 instead of 72, and there's just a lot of things like that going on. Um, I do like the pencils. I don't mean to, uh, to give the impression that I don't like them. I like them a lot, um, but there's some things like Ruby Earth that, oh my word, if you use Ruby Earth from the Derwent drawing set, and then you use Ruby Earth from the light fast line um you feel like you're holding the same pencil uh except for the barrel you know i mean it's just so identical yeah i mean they're to uh continue this conversation um yeah they're they are um i feel like they're they're opaque i mean i don't think that they're different um than the Derwent drawing in in opacity, it's it's a different um, experience because of the way that they lay down. Uh, these are you know supposedly, and I know some people uh, get hung up about oh you shouldn't call them oil or wax based pencils. Uh, they have both in them. Yeah, I know that's true, but they are different in performance. And so when you compare this pencil to the Derwent drawing, um, they are, they're different in the way that, uh, that they lay down. And if you've used pencils for very long, then you know that sometimes, even in the, Der in whatever pencil line you're talking about, Derwent Light Fast is no different, neither is the drawing, Derwent drawing set. One pencil can be different in performance from an, a, another pencil. Like the same colors um, within the same line may perform the same way. But if I take a blue and this chocolate pencil, they may perform quite differently than one another. And sometimes one lead is harder than the other, that sort of thing. So when I'm comparing that, that um, drawing, Derwent drawing Ruby Earth to the Derwent Light Fast Ruby Earth, it's very, very similar. I hope that made sense. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I don't make sense too much. <laughs> if I'm like focused in an area, uh, I have to stop drawing, you know, use a different part of my brain and explain something. So I hope what I said made sense, though. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you. Uh, draw very often. You know exactly what that's like. Okay, let me see here. I don't want to lose... Back here in this area that's really, really dark in the shadow, 
uh, I can put a little more blue back in here. And that's probably too light of a blue, actually. Looking at that a little closer, I probably need a darker blue. Okay, let me get back up here to the top of the head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you, Sergio. That makes makes sense. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's it uses a different part of your brain when you're when you're drawing. Um, but I want to come on these live streams and I want to actually draw. Hey, Roz, thanks for joining us here. Very, very cool. Rosalind is inside the Sharpened Artist Academy, and I'm so delighted to have her in there, as many of the rest of you who are on here are also in the Sharpened Artist Academy. Um, and I'm just very thrilled when you guys can join live like this. It's a lot of fun. So, and if you do have questions, I mean, by all means, you can shout those out as well. Uh, and one of the nice things about using pastel paper like this is you don't have to be real exact um, in a lot of areas. Like, I don't have to be very careful in my pencil strokes and in the way that I hold the pencil because it's a very forgiving um, support paper if you will I can be a little bit sloppy with it and it will still turn out fine and once I realized that I was like wow freedom um, <laughs> now it doesn't always give you the same the same look and the same effect uh, if you're wanting something that is just very tight and clean and is you know Depicting something that uh, that uh, has sort of this very pristine kind of look and and polished look, and I just don't think you can get too far away from a nice, good archival cotton paper like Stonehenge. Um, but on the other hand, if you want to do something quick, man, I tell you, pastel paper. Uh, a non-absorbent surface like this is the way to go. Okay, this can go in just a little bit more even. As I'm looking at this plane over here, and it's out like this, so this can come in a little bit more. This can come in over here. There we go. And... I got to get some lighter values and tones in that skin, and that will help some of that. Now this needs to come up just a little bit, right in here. There we go. So Mia on YouTube is asking, and you're new to colored pencil, so welcome aboard. It's good to have you, and you're asking when should you use fixative, and what does it do? It flattens out. It flattens out, and it breaks down all of the binders and the pigment from the colored pencil, and it creates something that um, is more akin to like paint, that kind of thing. Um, if you use too much, it will dissolve and remove your colored pencil. And so you have to be aware of that. Uh, when you're starting out, especially when you're beginning, then you want to use it sparingly. And you want to just be very reserved and careful with it at the beginning. Because you don't want to destroy all the layers of pencil that you just built up. 
Uh, but test it out and see what you think about it. It may be something that you enjoy and that you like to use um, for the right project and for the right spot and all of that. It's good sometimes. Large areas, getting something done quickly, um, it's a, a good way to go. It's a good technique to use. I like to use it in hair. I like to use it in backgrounds and things like that. Um, now, on this project so far, I've not used OMS. I've been using Powder Blender and Textured Fixative. Oh, the fixative. I'm sorry, I misunderstood um, the question there, Mia. Uh, I think I started answering what OMS is. So you're talking about fixative. I apologize. Um, yeah, fixative just builds up a layer on the project, uh, a barrier. And so once you do that, you're going to be able to go on top of it because it seals a layer underneath and so that's what fixative does. I apologize. Okay, so if you're talking about OMS, though, OMS was what I was answering a while ago. OMS breaks down uh, the pencil. And if you've got several different colors of pencil in one area, then it will blend them together it will break them down and if you've built up any opacity any of or any of these transparent layers on top of each other it's going to destroy that and just push everything down uh, because it gets rid of the properties of everything inside that pencil core so as you push put the pencils down on your project uh, and then if you go you know, you're building up these layers of different pencils, but if you go back over it with OMS, with solvent, odorless mineral spirits, then you're going to break down anything that you built up. Okay, let me get this lighter color in here now. I'm trying to see what what colors I'm looking at here, what I think ought to ought to go in here. This might be a good one. Yeah. I think that helps. And we can go over it with some some kind of uh, violet or burgundy kind of colors as well. But this is a nice one to add in. And I think this is sienna. No, it's brown ochre. Okay, that's good. All right. I see a lot of violet over here in some of these highlights on the on the hair. Hope you guys can see that. I know some of this is kind of difficult to see. Let's see if I can zoom in. That may help a little bit if I zoom in. I notice that I've got I've got more of a textured surface over in this area right here. As I started to draw, uh, I felt more of a texture, and that could be just the way that I sprayed uh, the surface whenever I was spraying the fixative on the paper. Sometimes that happens. I want to put more highlights on this, uh, these portions over here towards the left side. Anything that I think might be uh, hitting 
the hair from uh, a light source on that left side, I can accentuate that even more. Even if I don't see it, I can still do that. <laughs> what? Angel, you're saying that I hate you. I, I must not have seen your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can ask it again. Unless, uh, let me look, see if I can find it here. Um, oh, you're asking, did you miss a video on, of using the powder blender? Oh, no, actually, you didn't. You didn't miss that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do that on camera. And the reason why I didn't do that um, I don't have a problem to I may do that today, may do a little bit. It doesn't look like, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get done all the way today. But the reason I didn't do that is because you have to build up, I like to use multiple layers, and so I'm going to spray that textured fixative down after I've used the powder blender. And so there's drying time involved. So after I spray that, i got to let it dry, and then i got to go back over it again. So it just wouldn't make for a good uh, live stream to do that. Um, it would, we couldn't just sit here and wait on something to dry. And so using the powder blender, though, I mean, we could do that. But, you know, I don't want to sit around and just watch it dry either. Drawing this hair, though, you may feel like you're sitting around and watching something dry. <laughs> hair just takes so long. I'm going to move on and not continue just working on this hair. It just starts to get a little boring. It does for me. And I can imagine just watching someone draw hair. But I'm trying to t keep these uh, very tight little curls in here by using a little bit of a wiggle in, in my uh, pencil strokes. And I think... I think we're accomplishing that by doing that. Okay. Now, if you can't make a mental note to yourself and tell yourself what you just used, then write it down. You know, when you're working on a project... If you can't remember what you're working on, what pencil you're working with, I should say, uh, then you want to write that down. <laughs> Sergio, that's a hilarious question. Um, on Facebook, he's saying, have you ever sneezed while using powder blender? Uh, and were there any casualties? <laughs> um, no, I don't think I've sneezed. I try not. You don't want to breathe that in, though. That's a, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to breathe that powder. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, pastel powder a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was that's funny, Angel. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. And Sam, um, I think you were one of the ones that, that alerted me that I put um, 9.30 p.m. in the uh, email that I sent out to you guys letting you know I was going to do the live stream. So I apologize for that. Um, so what happens when I send things out too late? <laughs> uh, I was tired at that point. So I should have said a.m. But I think I put uh, morning time or something like that in there and then I also put AM in the subject line so hopefully there's enough context clues for people to understand that and am I ever up doing anything related to art at 9.30 p.m.? Most of the time I'm not so uh, that's also maybe a clue there <laughs> but I apologize for the confusion okay Okay, I'm going to move along. I, I keep saying that. I'm telling myself that. So, Yeah, Cassandra, it's midnight over there. Yeah, uh, that's that's the thing also is I've thought about just using uh, UTC time. 
putting that in my emails instead. Yeah, Sergio, I've I've seen that before where they're starting out, you know, with a sort of a a green base and building things up. I've never done that myself, but uh, I, that is interesting. Starting with that green underpainting on a portrait, um, but yeah, I've never I've never tried that myself, but it. It does look interesting. Okay, let's see. Let me go with this ivory for a while and work on this face. So I'm working in the lit areas, areas that are in highlight. So Elf, E-L-F, on YouTube is asking about a tutorial of oil painting technique um, regarding using a green, so starting out basically with a green face, you're saying, and... When you're talking about... Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think I was talking about that a moment ago. I don't remember the name of that tutorial or who did it either, but I, I've seen that before where somebody used a, a green underpainting. Um, and you're also asking about a recording of of this. This is being recorded, by the way, so. And the live stream actually will be available as a as a replay as well, just so you know. Kathleen's asking if you can add another layer of powder blender straight away, and can it work as an aid to cover any mistakes? Yeah, and Kathleen, that's exactly what you can do: is you can you can cover up mistakes very easily with powder blender uh, it's one of the advantages with it uh, because you've you can just keep adding more layers and you can add more more layers and then spray it with that textured fixative on top and keep going so yeah it does make it nice in that way yeah the sharpener that I'm using is this Afmat brand of sharpener um, almost time to to clean out that reservoir? Um, but it's got a couple of different settings on it, and it has a rechargeable battery. So you have a USB cord that you plug in to charge up the battery. And so far, I've never had it um, go completely dead yet, but. I, and I've used it for maybe a couple of weeks, and then I just charged it back up. So I'm not sure how long it will go. I should try that before you have to recharge it. Thank you, Elf on YouTube, telling me it looks lovely. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let's see. See a little more of a highlight right in here, but the biggest highlight is right here. So I have to kind of gauge where that, you know, value tapers into the dark values. So Elf, you're, use, uh, you're asking if I'm using Prismacolor or Polychromos. Um... Yeah, most of the time I'm not using Prismacolor. I I rarely ever use Prismacolor Premier. Um, they're not bad to use. They're just they've just got a lot of construction issues a lot of times, and they've got light fast uh, problems as well. So the ones that are are light fast 
um, they're okay to use, and there's many award-winning artists that use and love Prismacolor Premier. But I'm using um, Polychromos right now. That's the pencil I have in my hand at the moment. But I also, on this project, I'm also using uh, Derwent Lightfast. Angel. <laughs> Angel's getting... <laughs> Cracking me up this morning, and Sergio is cracking me up. So, all right, let me see if I can. I'm wondering if right in here we can get we can make this a little brighter just by using tracking right there. Seems to be the the high the the brightest highlight and I want to be careful about that also because it, it's it's kind of nice because this area you know while this is the brightest area these areas over here are pretty bright but I love it that this is brighter than this area on the edge because it also helps to create a three-dimensional look to the portrait. Yeah, you're right about that, Sergio, with teachers, um, traditional school teachers in the public schools. Yeah, they're at least in the United States of America, that is I'm not sure about a lot of other parts of the world, but um, yeah, they're really just not paid real, real well for the most part. Okay. I'm trying to identify some of these areas where uh, I have some pencil strokes that are showing that create a pattern and don't make it look smooth. And in those areas, I can just turn my wrist just a, a slight tilt of the wrist or just turn it just a little bit, and I can get rid of some of those areas that don't look smooth. Ah, thanks for that explanation there, Elf. That makes that makes sense on your on your name. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. Now a lot of people prefer like scrumbling or making little ovals when they're drawing in colored pencil. And I don't I don't actually do that. I um uh, I prefer linear strokes. You can get a smooth, very, very smooth look using linear strokes. Um, ah, that makes sense, Sergio. Romania, huh? Okay, well. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's probably kind of that way around the world with regard to teacher salaries. That's like one of the coolest last names I think I've ever heard. Man. I I used to wonder, you know, what would be a cool name um, for me. Like, why did my mom and dad, you know, figure out some kind of really awesome, different, cool name? Um you know other than John just something real plain and generic on my on my oldest brother I've got a lot of siblings but on my oldest brother um they do have I mean he he has a lot of my other brothers have common names but my oldest one has a very uh unique name his name is Revis and that was that was about as wild and unusual as my mom and dad got on 
on names. The rest of us have very common names. But wow, having a having a name like man, Sir Jew, that's that's pretty cool. can tell already that's not that is not going to get as bright as I want right there <laughs> Falcon now that's pretty cool <clears throat> So I'm noticing that this ivory is not going to be be able to get as bright as what I want in this area, which is fine. Uh, and so what I want to do then is I want to think about all these values as um, being a little more flat at this point in this area. And I want to think, okay, I'm going to... Uh, instead of thinking, you know, if we thought about a value scale from 1 to 10 and everything in the, the highlight area being through 1 through 5, and to make it simple, and everything in the dark side, uh, the shadows being 6 through 10, then within this lighter area, if I'm thinking about this and I thought, oh, I'm going to create a 2 over here, and this is going to be so bright, and I can't do that, I can't achieve it at the moment, then instead what I can do as I can think, okay, if I can't achieve that, I'm going to make everything right now a 3 or a 4 or something like that. Everything that, even some of the areas that will eventually become like a 2, if you will, then I'm just going to kind of flatten all of that out for the moment, and I can create more of that curvature by bringing out some of those highlights into um, some of those... those um, uh, lighter tones like a like a two later on uh, because I can spray this again and I can go back over it or I can use a lighter color I could use a white I really don't want to use a white though I could make everything else relatively darker than what I'm doing right here and so if I make everything else a little bit darker even these areas that are curving around the side of the face, this edge of the face, then it will create uh, more of a uh, popping effect, more of a dramatic um, uh, increase in the lighter values over here in those areas that I want. So there's a few ways of handling that. And at this moment, I don't have to worry about it. But I have to be aware of what's going on. Well, thanks, Roz. Yeah, it it is. I mean, if you know, if you can't use this to draw with, then you, at least you can use it to joust or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you've got a sharpener that you love, you know, then uh, stick with it. But if you are in the market, you know, take a look at that Afmat sharpener. Yeah, that's a great question, Sergio. Uh, how often do I use the white luminance pencil, he's asking, on such a dark uh, portrait? Yeah, that's going to be something that I probably, I probably won't use a lot of. I might reserve it for some of the very last uh, parts of the drawing process if I need it. I want to try to be careful about making something really bright too early on, but... 
you can do it, you know, if you wait until near uh, you're nearly completed with the drawing and then think about it as like a, a secret weapon, you know, and think, okay, I know I can do that if I need to later on here. Now, see, I'm making this a little bit too bright in this area, and that, that tends to happen sometimes with um, that, that uh, texture, you know, if you're using a fixative. All right, Kathleen, we'll forgive you for spelling color incorrectly. I'm I'm kidding. Yeah, I know you guys spell it with the O U in there. No no big deal. Okay. Yeah, the nice thing about where the textured fixative uh is applied very very well on the surface here. It will take the pencil very, very quickly. And you can build up a light layer easily in those areas. Oh, Sam, that is so, so nice of you to spell color that way just to, just to fit in, I tell you. I'm just teasing. Okay. I can get a little bit too, too bright over here on the nose if you're not careful. I think I've done that. There we go. Hey, congratulations, Sergio. If you just completed your first colored pencil portrait, that is awesome. I would love to see that. If you ever want to email that to me, that would be awesome. That's such a good feeling, isn't it? Just to get something like that under your belt and say, wow, I, I got that done. I did that. And now you're ready for your next one, I'm guessing. That is so fun. All right. I need a lot of yellow in all these areas. I've kind of gone crazy with the reds, and so I need to bring in yellow next or uh, an orange tint. And this, I've noticed, I've been looking at it for a while, needs a lot of work. It needs to be raised up quite a bit. There's... A lot of issues going on right now with the, these eyes. Yeah, Pam. Um, Pam over on Facebook saying that she's not sure if she wants to use fixative at all, um, and you don't have to. There, I, I'm telling you, this is the thing that I tell people whenever they're unsure about that or they're hesitant there are award-winning artists um in colored pencil who do not use fixative and um hasn't hasn't seemed to hurt what they've done so Hey, Sam, that's so nice of you to encourage uh, Sergio. Um, and if you're still working on one, that is that is great. That's awesome. I'll tell you, it, incremental steps, incremental progress is the name of the game, isn't it? Just not giving up. Just You just keep going. Okay. Let me see if I can taper that just a little bit. Now some of the things you can do 
with a drawing like this is when you're several layers of pencil in and keep in mind if you decide to use some of these tools you know and you want to start blending this a little bit that um, you know I'm not using any powder blender but I can still use use a sponge and and spread this around a little bit but keep in mind that it can take off some of the things that you just did it can kind of remove some of the areas that you just built up but it's really nice like in these areas that are right at the edge of the shadowed areas um, it's nice to do this just to just to blend that a little bit and it will it will spread it around a little bit and then you can go back over it again with another layer and even with a different color pencil makes it nice let me see Oh, thanks, Angel. I'm talking about the blending in the hair. I uh, thank you. I appreciate that. We're getting there. Not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Oh, thanks, Sergio. So you're working on something in graphite right now, I guess, Sergio. Pam's asking about um, using paper stump. I don't do that. Um, I know some people do, and nothing wrong with it. I I just don't. I don't prefer that. I don't like that look. I don't. I don't like the effects that it gives you. I like to use. If we're talking about graphite, especially, I don't like using them. I like to use just the pencils uh, in graphite to create. Um, everything that I'm I'm trying to do in my project and I like to build up layers in graphite but I have seen some amazing work done with using uh, paper stumps so in colored pencil I I don't I don't use them at all either in colored pencil um, I don't really know anyone that does in colored pencil there might be some people that do but I'm not aware of anyone that does uh, that's not to say that some don't do that. They could. Have you used those, Pam? Or are you just curious about it? Ah, I got you, Sergio. Pam, you said you have. Okay. In uh, graphite or in colored pencil or both? <laughs> Maybe both. Okay. I think it's time to add a little more of the orange in here and yellow. I would like to build all of this up. No, you should really send me <laughs> that portrait, Sergey. Uh, if you want to. Yeah, I would like to see it. I love looking at art. I love going to galleries. I love looking at art. I I don't know. It It gets me really... Uh, excited to go do some art myself and go work on projects. Actually, it's really fun. I get to go to an art gallery today, um, right before I have to go to a wedding. Um, <laughs> no, the wedding will be fine. But 
Uh, you can probably guess which one I'm more excited about. Uh, anyway, so that um, art gallery is about, it's a little over an hour away, and I've got three pieces in in the, uh, it's a artist reception that I'm going to, um, and I've got three pieces in there. But the thing about it is, with this particular um, judged show, so it's a juried show, you're juried in, and then the pieces are judged. Um, but you come there before the artist's reception, and you can pick up your piece. You had to deliver your artwork first, and you get to pick up your piece if it wasn't accepted. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that um, it was accepted. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara, on uh, YouTube there, telling me that it looks, um, it's looking great. Thank you. Um, I hope that at least one of my pieces was accepted. I won't know until today when I get there. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I may just have to pick up my artwork and leave, but I'll, I'll stick around for the for the uh, artist reception because I want to see which ones you know won, and I want to hear the judge talk about how he made his decisions and what he liked and didn't like and that sort of thing. That's always helpful, I think. I like hearing that. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. I saw some of the pieces, and some of those are just incredible. Yeah, um, so this is a weekend, Mia. But, uh, yeah, on an evening, I... I do plan on doing that. I do plan on uh, doing some on the in the evenings once in a while. It's a little tougher for me in the evenings. There's usually other things going on, uh, family related and stuff like that. But I will um, try to do that. Do some in the in the in the evenings sometimes to accommodate other people's uh, preferences. And I, I totally get that, totally understand. Cassandra, you said that's so mean. What are you talking about? So, Sergio, you're wondering what pieces I submitted to that show. I'm guessing maybe that's what you're asking. Um, if that's what you're asking, I submitted three, three different portraits to that show, and we'll see what happens. I don't know. I never expect anything when I when I go to uh, an artist reception. Oh, <laughs> Angel, that is hilarious. I'm <laughs> rubbing it in on how wonderful my life is. That's funny. That's I hope that's a joke because and and especially I hope that's a joke because you added wedding in that. If you know how much I look forward to going to weddings, um, then that's sarcasm that you put in there. <laughs> I don't really think of it as a uh, a real as a, a real plus uh, to go to a, a wedding. Um, I mean, depends on how you're related to the person, I guess. You know, um, I hope they're not watching this. That's kind of funny. They're like, "Wow, he really doesn't want to go to this." No, it's not that at all. So Kathleen, you're asking um, over on YouTube, is it a colored pencil exhibition, art exhibition that I'm going to? No, it's not. Um, it's so it's um, it's at the Miamisburg Art Gallery, and it's their annual art exhibition. And 
and the thing is, it's uh, it's got like four different categories, I believe. So one of the categories is drawing, and inside the drawing category, colored pencil is allowed. Um, pastels are allowed, and uh, graphite and other other uh, mediums that they consider a, a, a drawing medium. And so it's a drawing medium category, and that's what I entered under. And so I entered colored pencil pieces. But there are other colored pencil pieces, um, and there's other categories. There's oils, um, there's acrylics, I think, and I think they singled out watercolor. So they they didn't just say painting and drawing, you know. So they stuck all of these into separate categories, which is kind of interesting. So, and I saw I saw one oil painting that just really just blew me away it was it was a portrait and wow it was just so it was so good I can't wait to go and look at it again uh, when I dropped off my pieces I was able to see it but I'm going to be able to take a look at it again yeah congratulations uh Sergio that is so so cool that's that's awesome <laughs> That's funny, Sergio. All right. Now these little areas like this where you find, you know, you've got a little bit of a darker value right there underneath the bottom eyelid. I can come back in there if I've lost that and I can add something back. I'm just going to grab this chocolate um pencil and I can add back a dark value quickly right there and I don't have to be real exact about it again at this point I can worry about it later as far as the exact value but by just sort of quickly putting something down there I'm telling myself that is a darker value right there and I can refine it later and refine and define it a little bit better later on. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sam. Appreciate that. Let's see here. Well, welcome aboard, Kathleen, if you're new to Color Pencil. And especially coming from pastels, then, yeah, I can imagine how different this medium must feel compared to pastels. Oh, thank you, Somia, on Facebook. She just commented, beautiful. Appreciate that. Well, hey, Sally from Michigan. Thanks for joining. Awesome. Okay, take a look here. I need to think about this just a moment. Think about the direction here. Oh, 
All, Angel, that sounds like a fun show to watch. I'll have to see if I can check that out. Okay. Now I know this is most of this is going to be probably too bright down here. I mean, if you look at the reference, um, the neck is very bright because of a lot of horizontal light that we've got going on in this portrait. But I typically opt for creating a darker value in the neck. So I'm not going to just be a slave to my reference and create a very bright neck just because my reference says so. Um, but I am putting some lighter values in here at the moment so that I can make some, I can distinguish some things. not really worked on this ear. I could probably do that. This is probably too bright of a pencil to do that with. Tone some of this down just a little bit. Okay. So Sergio is asking what everyone else is working on in the meantime right now. That's a good question. Anyone want to uh, volunteer what you're, what's currently on your, your drawing table and what you're working on right now? That'd be fun to know. Okay, let me see here. I'm really liking this color I'm using here. This burnt sienna, especially in this dark area, it really stands out. Okay. I can use this ivory probably sparingly in some of these areas. Pam's asking, if with my pencils this sharp, do I go through them quickly? Um, you know, not as fast as you might think. Um, now, some of, some of the pencils I do, depending on the project, this is chocolate pencil uh, that I used on the last project um, that I worked on, and I used just about all of that one, so... I was really kind of disappointed that I used that much of that pencil. Uh, I really enjoyed that pencil, as you can see. <laughs> Angel, there is nothing wrong. You're asking people not to laugh because you're still working on how to hold the pencil properly get the right pressure and all of that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that is the right approach whenever you're trying to learn how to do something well, is to practice. Practice those things that will influence how, how well you're going to do things later on. There's a direct correlation 
in practice and executing on something uh, to um, get better at something to uh, the direct correlation is those that you know practice you know actually improve and you're talking about somebody who practices scales on a piano every day um, you know you're going to see someone later on who is actually improving um, there is an old story I remember and I can't remember exactly how it goes but it was something like um, you know this person in the audience watched this famous pianist play a piano and and then afterwards they went up to the pianist and were talking when they were talking to them and they said that that was so beautiful that was awesome um, I would I would give my life to be able to play a piano like that and and the pianist said yeah that's exactly what I did <laughs> you know so I know we understand that as artists that practicing because I still practice all the time and I know most of you do as well practicing is actually what helps us um This comes in a little bit more. There we go. So I need a little more red on that ear, but I can worry about that later. Okay. So. Let's see, I can get No, it's funny you should ask that though, Serge, you asking if I've got any experience with uh etching. Um something I'm interested I I have tried some etching, I'll put it that way. Tried is the operative word there, didn't turn out so well, but I attempted, we'll put it that way. Um <laughs> But I'll tell you something I'm kind of interested in, though, is um, Metal Point. And I bought a tool for that, and I've not tried it yet, but I'm excited to try it one of these days, one of these years, when I'm done with certain projects that I'm trying to work on. Let's see if I can use that eraser again. Well, thanks, Roz. I really appreciate that. Um, and it's it's been so fun to see the dramatic improvement in uh, Rosalind's uh, work uh, that she's been that she's been doing. Uh, and it, it, that I I got to tell you that is so rewarding to me uh, just to see students take the material, actually do the, the exercises and do the homework and put it into practice. Um, and that's so awesome. <laughs> 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 
Angel, oh my word, he cracked me up. Pretending you're me, that's that's funny. So Pam, you're asking, how can I get rid of that grainy look? Um, Pam, I tell you what, email me something that you're talking about so that I can, if you would like to, and I'll take a look at it for you, and, and I can tell you what what my opinion is uh, of what you're doing, and tell me the materials that you're using as well, uh, and then uh, I will give you some feedback on that. How does that sound? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to tell without, you know, seeing something. Janelle, she, you're waiting for Lisa. You're talking about Lisa Clow? Okay. Let me get this. Well, that didn't turn out so well. Right there. I'll worry about that later. You have to... For me, I... I I'm thinking about this area right here. I have to be careful because switch pencils here. Um, you know, this jawline, if you're not careful, you'll have it um, you'll have it connected to the face in the wrong spot. you know you'll you'll warp the anatomy and the jaw, you know these these large muscles in the neck here, that help to form uh, these values back here go back behind the ear. So, Sergio, are you talking about Lisa Clow, my co host on the podcast? How did we meet? Is that what you're asking? Um, okay, Janelle, you're talking about Lisa on the podcast. Okay, so you guys must be talking about Lisa Clow. Um, how did we meet? Wait, you know what? We've, uh, we've never really met in person, if that's what you're, if that's what you're asking. Um, we, the, we were connected with each other. Uh, I, I reached, I was reaching out to her, um, and that was years ago now. I don't remember. She had around... 15 to 20,000 um, subscribers on YouTube, I think, at the time or something like that. Okay, I'm just going to have to move on from that area right there. Not real happy with the way that turned out, but that's okay. Um, it'll all come out in the wash later on. So, sharpen this pencil again. The one and only chickmunk lady. Oh, Sergio. That's funny. Okay. All right. So now that I use this this color though in that area, I need to make sure I use it in other areas of the face or it will start looking really odd. I mean, it already looks a little odd because of only using it in that area. Awesome, Elf. Thank you so much for joining, and you have a great weekend. Thank you. I cannot believe... this is That is the weird thing about drawing, though, or doing art. In general, I cannot believe it's 11 o'clock. I feel like we just started. You know, for most of you who have been watching, you're like, yeah, no, it feels this late. Uh, but to me, it feels like I just I just turned the camera on. That is so, so odd how that happens. Yeah, we're not going to get done, but what I want to do now is I want to use this sienna color, this burnt sienna, in all of the skin. 
and at the same time I want to start smoothing out um, some of these uh, areas on the skin as well. <laughs> Search you. I've got to see this drawing, I tell you. You're drawing a mustache for an hour and a half, huh? That that sounds very fun, actually. <laughs> Don't you love drawing mustaches? I do. I'm putting this on here sort of in a haphazard way a little bit, and I'm going to use one of these sponges again to blend this after I get it on. It's it's a nice color, isn't it? I, I love this. <laughs> uh, Sergi says he loves drawing beards because he has he doesn't have one, has none. <laughs> I just turned my pencil just a little bit in you know these areas where I'm getting towards the edges places like that I, I want to turn my pencil a little bit and it will it will maintain my point on my pencil longer if I do that Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool, Pam. I see that, that you're going to email it to me. That's cool. All right. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I'm just laughing at what Sergio, Sergio is saying about if it hasn't sprouted up at this point in his life. So, I don't know. He's a funny guy. Okay. All right, I'm sort of pleased with that. Sort of go in here a little bit. Yeah. That's exactly right. Good point, Sam. That's exactly why I'm thankful to be bald. I don't have to spend all that time fixing my hair so yeah good advice there you don't have to spend any time at all working on a beard if you don't have one right and the same thing is true with hair uh it's the best things ever happened to me losing my hair that was wonderful yeah there you go use those hours drawing beards huh <laughs> okay this is another good pencil to use in here and right at the edge of that value, I can use this more of a brown. Come back in here now. 
with a sponge and you know you can also you can also use a um a brush just a paint brush you can use one of those hard bristle brushes the uh, scrubber brushes and those work nice as well there we go okay I created some pretty harsh lines up here in the forehead that uh, I'm now I'm fighting against them all the time. And if you're not careful, you can do that. And I did that. So I have to be aware that that happened. Now, I like that tone a little bit better than what I had earlier. Um, not quite there yet, though. I've got to build up more of that color to be able to get that tone in there uh, the way that the way I want it. Uh, and that ear is still sticking out like a sore thumb at the moment, which is okay. Uh, we'll get there. So, all right. I am going to go ahead and stop the live stream. And I just want to say thank you so much, guys, for joining. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the live stream. And I just wanted to say thanks for joining and stay sharp.